Hello, I'm Martin Fish. As many flower shows have been cancelled or postponed once again in 2021, houseplant specialist Dibbler's Nurseries have put together another virtual flower show with lots of top horticultural exhibitors joining them. In this programme, we have a quick look around the show with lots of wonderful advice and top plant suggestions from the nurseries and national plant societies. I'll be hosting a gardening question and answer session with some of our exhibitors and we even have a musical number from the British Cactus and Succulent Society. Welcome to the Virtual Flower Show 2021. <music> start by navigating from our virtual flower show website into the 3D floral hall and around to gold medal winning Brighter Blooms display. Here are Matthew's tips on sowing baby leaf salad. Hello, I'm Matthew from Brighter Blooms. Today we're going to have a look at a really quick and simple task of sowing cut and come again or baby leaf salad. So we've got some mixes that we supply and we're particularly going to look at bright and spicy today. It's one of my favourite mixes really. These can be sewn into any sort of container. We use sort of shallow bowls for our shows, um, so they don't give us too much depth really, but any reusable container is absolutely fine. We're using a multi-purpose compost. It's a nice fine compost. It's great for sow seed sowing. So we just break it up and then put some of it into the bowl, about an inch from the, uh, the top of the bowl to give us a nice sort of level, flat surface to sew into. Nothing too scientific really um, at this point. So take the seed from the packet and one of these packets will give us around about two sowings in a bowl this side, size. Spread it nice and finely over the surface, we're not looking too thick, um, so it clogs each other up. Put the seed packet away for, for use again. I'm just going to put a nice fine uh, covering over that seed, not bury it as such. I'm going to use a sieve, you could just use your hands if you wanted, but the seed gives us a nice fine covering. They're going to just pop a label into it with the uh, the date and the name on. Take it down here, give it a quick uh, watering with a very fine nozzle, just to wet it up a little bit. And then here are some that we planted sort of uh, a couple of weeks ago in a warm greenhouse. So in a green cold greenhouse is fine. Mustard and the one we just planted, the frilly leaf mix. Want some top recommendations for your garden and houseplants? Here are our experts' favourite varieties for spring 2021. So, one of my favourite plants has to be Iris Vesicola Rowden Sonata. It's a Rowden cultivar, bred here at the nursery by John and Galen Carter over the past 30 years. It's a beautiful Iris Vesicola water iris. With delicate violet balls, white veining and a yellow throat, it's perfect iris for any size pond. At this time of year, it's quite difficult to decide upon which of these beautiful spring flowers are actually your favourites. Doronicum, Primula relata, Iphion. But you know what? I think the star of the show is this beautiful viola. Look at those stunning, huge, big flowers, which are scented and they are fantastic. This is Viola Avril Lawson, and it is covered in buds. It's going to be in full flower really, really shortly. And all of these arms are going to go out and they'll spread and make a beautiful, large clump. Lovely, dense foliage, beautiful, huge, big flowers on Viola Avril Lawson. Such a pretty scented flower for sun or part shade and will just extend and you can take the shears over the top of it if it gets a little bit too unruly. 
My favourite plant at the moment is Tierella Emerald Ellie, which is bred by us. I love it because it has beautiful striking foliage with pretty pure white flowers. And as you can see, the bees love it. It's very hardy, easy to grow and loves the shade. Hi, Matt Soper here, Hampshire Carnivorous Plants. My favourite plant at the moment has to be this new Saracenia cultivar. This is Saracenia Tess. It's a fantastic plant. It starts off this green pinky colour, but turns this dark burgundy later in the season. Um, it's really tough, really hardy. We've got the unheated greenhouse here, but it makes a perfect plant outside in a peat bog garden. So Saracenia Tess, look, it out, for, look out for it on the website. Hi, Waterside Nursery here. My favourite pond plant for spring is the Cautha palustris, marsh marigold. You can see the bright yellow flowers in this plants here. Plenty buds still coming for May flowering. It'll grow from a shallow shelf in your pond and flower all the way through March, April and into May. My favourite plants are Streptocarpus. And at the moment, my favourite is Carnival. It's a beautiful house plant and it's a new variety we introduced last year from our own breeding programme. This one is a new addition that I really like. It's called Nepenthes albo marginata and the albo marginata is the white line around the top here. Um, I've read up and done some research on this plant. It turns out it's partial to termites although we can't provide it with termites I'm sure we can give it a bit of feed to keep it going as I said it's a tropical plant so we'll need high humidity not really ideal for this greenhouse but this was where we chose to film as it's our new greenhouse which Some more advice now. Hoyland Plant Centre's Colin Hickman explains how to split tobaggies, a beautiful herbaceous perennial. If you've grown tobaggies before, you know that they flower really well, they spread really quickly and form nice pots full. Um, the downside is over time they can become too congested and start to decline. So every three or four years, you want to take them out of the pot about this time of year and divide them. Dead easy, I'll demonstrate on this little one here that's a nice pot full now. So take him out of the pot. You can see he should, he should have nice creamy white roots as you can see, healthy root system. Small ones, you should be able to just prise them apart by hand. Big ones, a good sharp knife does the trick. You can sort of give him a little cut and opens it up for being broken apart. But this one you can probably break apart. So there's a natural split there which I'm going to take advantage of. So I'm just going to get him down there. You can hear that nice satisfying crunch. Taking him into a couple of pieces now. Don't take him too small, but I'll certainly take this apart again. Nice piece there. I'll probably go again as well. Into nice clumps. There we go. So I've taken him into five good sized pieces. I wouldn't take him down into individual eyes um, unless you're wanting to propagate them. But for the garden purposes, you've got five nice good new plants there. Um, and now simply just repot them. Fill your pot maybe a third full. Put him in nice and central and just back fill around him. Don't forget to firm him down so he's nice and secure in the pot and that is absolutely perfect. I've potted him up there into a good well-drained media. We tend to use two parts compost to one part grit or perlite so a nice gritty free draining mix is perfect for tour bag years. You might like to try growing something a bit more exotic in your garden this year. Mark from Todd's Botanics shares his knowledge of tree ferns. Hello, I'm Mark from Todd's Botanics. Um, we've got here 
our fresh shipment of tree ferns from Australia, Dixonia Antarcticas. These are the one foot size. Um, this is an, a good size, good uh, representation of an average one. See, a bit bigger than a foot. Um, we're lucky to get these in this year because of all the issues dropping the containers coming over. Um, now is the perfect time to uh, order them um, because for shipping, we can literally send it like that and in a few weeks, you'll have all the growth coming out of the top. Once the growth starts coming out, we can't ship them for about a month because the growth's too brittle and we just break off. Um, and the last thing we want to have to do is to cut the leaves off to ship them out to you. So now is the perfect time to, to buy them. Um, if you see below, there's a link onto our website. Um, we're running an offer until the end of April, so that has a few days to run on it. And then it'll go back to our normal price, um, which, will, which we carry all year. And we, we send them out with the leaves. It's just uh, we can't send them out for the next few weeks once they've started leafing. Um, these are exported um, from Australia. They're ethically sourced. Um, they grow naturally under the pine tree plantations uh, as a weed crop. Um, in years gone past, they would have bulldozed these and burnt them. Nowadays, what happens is the tree fern harvesters go in ahead of the pine tree uh, loggers and they harvest the tree ferns and they make a roadway, road network for the pine tree harvesters. So it's um, sustainably sourced um, and saving a crop that otherwise would be bulldozed. Each one should come with a plant passport and on here you'll have a number which gives you a GPS reading which logs it to within a square metre of where it's come from. Um, this, is a, this is the way you can show that they are, have been ethically sourced. I'll show you our two foot tree ferns now. We've got those in the crate over here. So as you can see, the two footers are absolutely amazing in size. Um, again, we can still send these by courier, overnight courier, uh, and then they can start growing for you. Um, what we suggest is if you can put them into a bucket of water, that's a pretty big bucket, so a dustbin would work. Uh, and it's, it's like a block of oasis used for flower arranging. If you pour water on it, it runs off, but if you soak that, it's like a sponge and then it holds all the moisture. And that's the best way to wake them up. So soak that for a few hours until there's no air bubbles. Um, even if you can only do it in a bucket and you can only do it up to that height, that's fine. Do that for an hour and then flip it upside down and uh, do the same. That will really help get its moisture. Obviously it will come with a this way up um, label because when you get this, some people do get confused about which is the top and which is the bottom. So you can see here, these are the old leaf stalks. So obviously this needs to be the top. On the bottom, you can see where it's been harvested. So that's this bum. What they do is they don't actually dig them up, they chainsaw them off at ground level. And all this fibrous root um, is what they have and that keeps them upright. So you can grow them in the pot or in the ground, it doesn't matter. We would plant that to about that sort of height. It will root out from that over the next year and that will give it stability and it will take moisture up from, from the ground. Um, so you plant a bit, not too much, because you're paying for the, tr the height of the trunk. Um, and then the new leaves will start to unfurl and you want to water and feed in the crown, in the top. So we feed in two ways. We have a liquid uh, tree fern feed made for us by Lou Archer from her alpacas. And we liquid feed that straight into the top, into the crown in here. The other thing we do is we use the alpaca beans, um, which is a polite way of saying the actual solids of the alpaca's bum. Uh, and we put a handful of that in the crown in here um, twice a year, and that's a slow release fertilizer. Every time you water it, every time it rains, it's taking a little bit of food in through the top there. When these are open, all the leaves create this great big funnel shape. So naturally in the wild, when these are growing under trees, that funnel catches all the falling leaves and they so inside here would be a bundle of rotting leaves and that's what's feeding the tree fern all the time so what they want is a small strength feed a weak feed but regularly that's the really important thing is to have regular feeding and you're not feeding for this year's growth because those leaves are out already out you're feeding for next year's and the year after tree ferns have sort of an orange pith core if you ever cut one open um, and that stores all the nutrients and, um, for the growth for the coming years. If you don't feed them, you'll find the leaves get shorter and shorter and shorter. And you can have a great big tree fern with tiddly little leaves. 
you can still recover it with feeding, but it's going to take you two or three years to get the leaf growth back and get that, that um, strength back in the plant. Our gardener's question and answer sessions have proved exceedingly popular at the show. Martin is back to host another session. Welcome back to the Virtual Flower Show. My name is Martin Fish and I've got with me a group of exhibitors here, all RHS Gold uh, winners, so uh, the best of the best we've got here. And we're going to answer a few more questions oh, now. Fantastic. So we're going to start everybody. with one about pen stemmons. And this question comes from Sharon. She's got a couple of pen stemmons that she's growing in pots and she's had them now for a few years, um, but they've never flowered. She cuts them back in the spring. They grow back nice and strong and healthy, but no flowers. So she just wants any ideas or any tips that we can give her to try and encourage some flowers let's year, this year let's make 2020 the year the pen stemmons flower for Sharon <laughs> so anybody grow pen stemmons I do but not in pots mine are in the well, I do but Vicky you do go on no I know I don't grow many no you you Rosie you're better at, you're better with pens you grow loads of pen stemmons yeah, my brother breeds do. them but my brother breeds them but you actually grow loads of them so go on <laughs> Okay, let, let, let's go with this. So pen stemmons again in containers, sounds as though she's pruning them at the right time. They're growing perfectly well. If they're not flowering, then the feed regime is something that's got to be looked at. Um, for pen stemmons to grow and flower properly like any flowering plant, they need a load of uh, K. The, you know, they just got to have potassium. Tomato feed, from the beginning of the season when they start into leaf, just give them tomato feed and that should encourage them to put on some flowers. And if they're putting on a huge amount of foliage and becoming very, very green, I might advise that she actually takes a third of the growth out once the growth has got up to around about six, six inches, what's that? 15 centimeters um i'm <laughs> not very good with this modern technology um so uh, yeah i would take half you know a third of it out thin out the amount of foliage that's there because it just seems to be wanting to grow 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 and mm. if you restrict that that will then encourage it to actually put on some flowers if it doesn't work this year get rid of them and start again mm. to be honest because it's not worth it if, if you're growing them to be flowering and they're not doing it just get rid of them and start again okay and there's lots of places you can buy them online at the moment of there course are, absolutely. So, uh, so you know just get <laughs> get googling them sharon i think the other thing is make sure you've got them in a fairly sunny place as well because they do like some sun on them they'll, they, they'll take a little bit of shade but they predominantly like a, an open yeah, sunny warm sun. position and the potash will hopefully encourage some nice air flowers for you right um this is a question for alec uh we've got with us uh he's disappeared oh he's not he's right in the middle of the screen there this is a peony one alec um this is from sue bell and she would like to know what and when to feed peonies and and what and what sort of fertilizer would you use now we don't know whether these are in containers i'm assuming they're growing in the ground so how would you feed peonies well peonies generally aren't that hungry it has to be said so if you've got reasonably good soil um you probably don't need to feed them that often maybe once in the spring when the shoots are just coming through um or maybe in the autumn um you can use product placement. You can use some of our fertilizer, um, but any well-balanced general fertilizer will do. Um, certainly I wouldn't recommend using um, tomorite or anything like that, that's probably a bit too much. Um, so something a bit more well-balanced, uh, grow more, something like that works very well. If you've got really sandy soil, of course you'll need to um, make sure you do stay on top of feed. But if you've got reasonably good soil, um, most peonies tend to do very well without any feed at all. Yeah, I mean, they've got that big fleshy root, haven't they, I suppose, which is a natural food store for them. If, if Sue hasn't done them now and wants to, it's still time to, she can give them a feed while they're growing, presumably, it won't do any harm? Won't do any harm at all, no. It won't necessarily help them flower this year, but it will certainly yeah. help them flower next year. Let's end on a high note. We have a series of national societies joining us at the show. As promised earlier, here's a musical number from the British Cactus and Succulent Society. If it grows in the desert, they know what it's called. 
they might meet in a library or a church hall. You can find them on a weekday night, showing their exotic holiday slides. The British Cactus and Circus Thank you.